What is up, fellow stump grinders and future fellow stump grinders? Jake here, tactical stump removal. Freezing cold outside again today. Typical winter video. In the office today, just kind of messing around with a new computer. And figured we'd shoot another video. Uh, this video is basically calling out to fellow stump grinders or guys that are trying to get into the stump grinding world. Basically, um, I'm, I'm, I set this channel up to help you guys. So in order for me to help you, you have to help me. Um, and what I mean by that is basically shoot me some questions. Uh, shoot them, you know, over the comments section. Look up my email. My email is pretty simple, tacticalstumpremoval at gmail.com. We're pretty easy to find on Google, really easy to find on Facebook, things like that. And basically, you know, you ask and I will do my best to point you in the right direction and kind of go from there. Uh, recently, I've had some questions about uh, how do I stay organized and how do I keep my jobs in line, things like that. So that video is going to be coming out soon. Uh, my wife and I are going to kind of go over that because... I don't do a lot with the computer. So she's going to kind of show you guys how we handle that with the Google, uh, Google Sheets. Oh, other, what else is up on here? Let's see. I get this question all day, every day. It seems like, what machine should I start with or what machine should I buy? That's a hard answer. Um, it is, but it isn't. So let's just go over the fact that you're trying to start a stump grinding business and you want to uh, buy a grinder. So I kind of went over a little bit of that before. There's no right or wrong answer. If you go out and you want to buy, a, you basically just have to buy what you can afford, um, if that makes sense. I mean, it should make sense. Don't go getting into debt at first because <laughs> let's be honest, most of us are in debt now. So go out and I, I always tell everybody to rent. Rent first, just give it a go. If you enjoy it and you think you can make something of it, that's when you're going to decide, go ahead, I'm going to invest some money and buy my own grinder. Um, that's the best way to start out. So rent, do a few jobs, things like that. Don't go posting all over Facebook that you're a, a professional stump grinder. You are not. Get in touch with family and friends. Do stuff for those people first. Learn the heartaches and headaches before you start opening up a giant can, can of worms and destroying people's property. You know, at least your friends can kind of understand and help you out that way. So that's going to be my best suggestion as far as getting your start after you get you know everybody's that, that you know stumps taken care of and things like that and you still like what you're doing that's when you're going to decide to invest um i hear it all the time online i see people posting all the time you know in the forums what how much should i spend how much it, it, it always comes down to buy what you can afford. So if you can only afford a little handheld grinder, that's fine. Go ahead and do that for a while. The nice thing about stump grinders is that they hold their value. So if you buy a stump grinder today for $4,000 and you use it for a season, that machine's still going to be worth $3,500 to $4,000. You're not going to lose on it unless you don't maintain your equipment and you just destroy it or whatever. Um, take care of your equipment and you won't have that problem. So some guys obviously have more money than others. Um, I have seen guys buy the crappiest little $3,000 stump grinder and they turned it into a business. I've seen guys go out and spend $90,000 at Vermeer, Rayco, Carlton, whatever, and they lasted half a season and they're out. So it's really what you put into 
uh, what you got. When I first started, I started with a handheld. I Well, actually, I started with a rental unit. That's how I kind of really got into this stuff. I had a whole bunch of stumps, so I decided to do my own. I liked what I was doing, figured it would make a good side gig. I purchased a walk-behind. Had it for a very brief couple months. Knew that it wasn't enough for me. Sold that machine, took the money that I made with it, and then I invested it into a Rayco RG35. And that 35 was a game changer for me. I absolutely loved it. It was completely better than the rental grinder. It was a lot better than the walk behind. So it kind of got my foot in the door and I was able to continue working and, you know, keeping people happy. Uh, when you have that style of machine, I don't want to take a whole bunch of flack for this one, but you're still not going to hammer out a ton of jobs. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to be fast enough. So the grinder that you buy is going to dictate the amount of A, money you make and jobs that you're going to complete. So obviously those kind of go hand in hand. The more jobs you do, the more money you make, vice versa. So start off with something like that on the weekends, whatever. Just keep moving up. You're not going to have a huge clientele at first. So Start on the low end. That's what I suggest. I mean, if you go out and buy an $80,000 machine, nobody knows who you are. There, Everything in this business is basically word of mouth. If you ask any professional stump grinder out there, any guy that does this every day, they're not just finding him in the phone book and calling him. It doesn't work like that. You know, you work for one guy and that guy tells five other guys. And next thing you know, those five guys tell five more guys and everybody's calling you. So start out slow. Get into the 35, run that as long as you can, and, and you'll know. You'll know when you cannot handle any more jobs. At that point in time, you're going to have to decide to either move up or stay where you're at. So uh, for me, I'm just going to tell you my basic story on this. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't have COVID. Um, had the 35, wasn't enough. Ended up buying another 35. So now we've got two of those. And I had a friend helping me out on the side. And I was able to keep up a little bit. You know, it, people were not dependable. I've come to realize that. So, you know, I had some help. Got some jobs completed. Um, and I still wasn't able to keep up. So the following year... And this is, you know, obviously the first grinder I had was almost a year. The second grinder I had was almost a year. The third grinder was almost a year. So we're on year three. Year four, that's when I really decided that I'm too busy and I have to either leave my job or continue grinding stumps. And it's, it's a gamble. And every year is different. You never know what can happen. So year four, I purchased an RG45. That was a complete game changer. That machine was twice as fast as having two of my RG35s. I mean, it was just so much smoother, so much faster. And at that point in time, tree guys started to notice me. They, You know, you go out and you spend $40,000 on a stump grinder, you're kind of serious into what you're doing. So that's when the tree company started calling me. After that, I ran that machine for an entire year. So now we're going on to year five, and I met up with uh, a couple of the guys at Rayco, explained to them my situation, and they said that the RG80 might work better for me. And I said, screw it, let's see what happens. So I purchased the RG80, and that machine has been awesome all last year. I mean, we were able to keep up with most of our stuff, but again, as usual, more people tell more people, and I'm slammed again, and next thing I know, I was three weeks three weeks booked out, so now it's time for, you know, the next move. So we just purchased another RG55, and we're going to try the whole somebody working for us again, and I don't know if it's going to work out. Well, I, there's, there's good things and bad things, so the nice thing is, is the RG45, doesn't matter what grinder you have, it's going to break. 
if it breaks, I'm not going to get behind. So I'll have the RG55 to, you know, keep moving, things like that. The RG80 and the 55, I should be able to keep up with most of my jobs if I can find the right person to run it. That's a whole nother video. Um, trying to find somebody that's going to be reliable or, you know, fit your needs. So back to the original question, what grinder should you buy? If you're asking me, I say start small. Work your way up. Uh, every machine that I've ever bought, I've sold for about the same price or sometimes even a little over. So not a big deal there. You know, if you start small, it's going to leave you room to buy a truck, trailer, tools, saws, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my best suggestion I got for you there. Um, other questions that we got, let's see here. What teeth should I use? Again, that's a personal preference question. Depends on who you ask. Um, if you buy a brand new machine, some companies might get upset if you change them. Sometimes they don't. You just got to kind of have to talk with them. Oh, how much money do you make? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know if I can answer that. Every year is different. So oh, I started uh, first year made, I don't know. Four or five thousand dollars. Second year, I doubled. <clears throat> Excuse me, I doubled. So, um, third year, um, I'm sure I came in pretty close, if not more than what. Uh, this is a hard answer. I, I can't, I'm not just everybody's different, everybody's area is different. So, do I make decent money? Sure. Do I work six days a week? Yes. Do I work all day long? Yes. So like I said, everybody's different. I've got guys in my area that do this as a retirement thing. They do it two days a week. That's cool. Um, are they making a ton of money? No. Um, they're making enough to pay their bills. It's that simple. Um, that's, it's, it's, uh, there's no set price on this stuff guys um, I'm more affordable than just about anybody in my area um, I still feel that I'm competitive uh, but I also have $250,000 worth of equipment that has to work every day so when a stump grinder gets upset that you undercut them by a certain amount of dollars that's simply because I have to go to work every day I'm not doing this on the weekend so your prices have to reflect that type of stuff. Um, can you make a living doing this? Yes, absolutely. You have to be 100% dedicated to this job though. It's like any other, it's, it's any other business. Uh, you wanna start a restaurant business and you wanna make crap food? Nobody's gonna come to see you. If you are passionate about what you're doing and you make really good food, people are gonna come see you. Uh, Salesman, same thing. You sell a crap product, nobody's coming to see you. You sell a good product, everybody comes to see you. So there's just a, there's a lot to it. And we'll get more into that stuff. Like I said, you guys got questions, I'll do my best to give you some answers and that's about the best I can do for you. Um, I don't know if we're gonna go through anything else today. We'll kind of save some more stuff for other videos. This video is already creeping on 14 minutes. So, yeah, you guys got questions? I'll do my best to answer whatever you got, uh, honestly, and that's all I can do. Um, so we'll cut that video there, and I will see you guys on the next one. Uh, maybe we should do, I don't know how, me and these videos, <coughs> excuse me, me and these videos uh, don't tend to get along because I... I don't know what all you guys want to hear. I don't know what you want to see. Um, I did get a message from YouTube, uh, email from YouTube, and they said we've got 600 and something. Well, let's look. YouTube. 
Let's see how many subscribers we got now. Again, I don't really care. It's not a big deal, but... Uh, No, we're not looking for stun guns. I don't know why that came up. 609 subscribers. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, glad to see you guys are, you know, interested in this thing. And basically what in, what they were saying in the, the video is the more subscribers you have, the easier it is for other people to find you. Um, so like I always say, I don't care. If you want to subscribe, cool. If you don't, I don't care. I'm not doing YouTube to make money. I'm simply doing this to kind of pass information along to you guys to help you stay up to date, kind of answer questions that you might have. There's only a couple guys online doing these YouTube videos now, and I have the time, so I might as well figure I figure I'm, I hope you out if I can. So yeah, if you subscribe, that's only going to help the next guy out. If you don't, that's okay too. Not a big deal. Um, if you like the videos, great. Go ahead and support them. If you don't, I guess you can thumb down them. I don't care. I can take it. <laughs> All right, guys. That's enough for today, and I will talk to you here in a little bit. Um, enjoy it, and I hope everybody's uh, getting ready for their season and everything's going to work out good for you. Uh, we'll see you here later.